Hello and welcome to this video. This is part one of how to learn and how to play the aria Bist du bei mir. It translates to, if you are with me, I go with joy. And uh, this is a very well-known song uh, that once was thought to have been composed by J.S. Bach, but actually uh, it was discovered, or I don't know when, but uh, it was discovered. It was actually composed by a composer by the name of Gottfried Stolzl. Gottfried Stolzl. Uh, Stolzl was a contemporary of J.S. Bach's. He was born in 1690 and lived to 1749. Bach lived from 1685 to 1750. So very close, um, very close in their uh, birth and death dates. So they were exact contemporaries. I don't know if uh, Stolzl and Bach personally knew each other, but I'm sure they knew each other professionally. Gottfried Stolzl was a very well-respected composer. He had an outstanding reputation in the um, 1700s in, in the composition of, uh, in the Baroque style. And uh, he wrote many different types of uh, works, including operas. Bach did not write any operas, but Stolzl wrote operas. And in the opera Diomedes, Diomedes uh, in Gottfried Stolzl's opera, appears the song Bist du bei mir. And this song eventually made its way into the, the uh, notebook for Anna Magdalena Bach, and that's the copy I have here. The copy I have here, it's two pages long. It's a really beautifully laid out copy and you can get yours free if you just click on the link below this video. And then you can follow along with this tutorial. Uh, this basically is the, the vocal line in the right hand plus the accompaniment in both hands. Uh, it is not easy, it is not, it's not easy to play necessarily, but it is not terribly difficult. So it's a good intermediate level piece for piano students. It's a beautiful melody. And had, had, had I not been told that this was actually by Stolzo, I would have not known because it sounds like Bach. It, it, it's the very exact kind of compositional style that Bach would have done. <clears throat> so that's one reason why it was believed for a long time that this was by Bach. And then uh, I guess it was discovered later it wasn't, but I'm just going to say J.S. Bach here in the title because it's in the Anna Magdalena notebook, which is compiled by Bach and Anna Magdalena. Anna Magdalena, by the way, was Bach's second wife. She was a very good singer. She probably sang this aria. Anyway, that's a little background behind this, uh, behind this song. The melody goes like this. Sure, you may have uh, heard that song before. What we're going to do first, before we start actually learning the music, I want you to print out your copy, and let's just go through the form, the overall form of this. It's a good idea to, to before you work on a piece, to really examine the form. You know, don't, don't just start, I'm trying to get this situated here <laughs> so you can see it as, as well as, as well as me. Okay, I'm just going to put it like this. Okay, so we have the aria here. So I want you to mark a capital letter A right here, put a circle around it, and a capital letter B 
right here. Put a circle around that. That's where the repeat sign is. <clears throat> and then put a capital letter C right here at the beginning of measure 19 with a circle around it. And then put a capital letter A right here at the beginning of measure 28. And a capital letter B with a circle around it also and at the beginning of measure 37. Okay, now these are the sections or the phrases that the song can be broken down into. We have the, what I call the A section here going up through uh, measure 9. And then we have, starting in measure 10, we have the, the next section here, which I, I'm just calling the B section, for lack of a better term. And then it goes and has another section here, the C section, which goes into a different key. This goes into a C minor. We're actually in the key of E flat major for this song. So this goes into the relative minor key here uh, for the C section. Then what's, what's really nice about this song is, in learning it, is when you get to measure 28, you're basically done. When you, after you've learned up to like about measure 27, you're basically learning everything you need to learn. Measure 28 to the end is basically exactly the same as the beginning uh, to measure 18. So the beginning to measure 18, almost exactly the same as 28 to the end. Almost. I say almost because this first measure is a little bit different. But basically that's where the, you know, that measure is different, but basically it's all pretty much the same after that. That's a good thing. Then that means you don't have to learn as much as it looks like. It's only, only you're only learning about one page of music, just a little bit over one page, but it's actually two pages. That's a good thing. Um, what else can I say about this? Well, it's a it's in three four time. We see three four time here, so we're going to count to three. And it is it doesn't have a tempo mark here, but it's traditionally done uh, pretty slow, actually moderately slow. Uh, my preferred tempo for this is 63 on the metronome. So if you put it on 63, I'll just play a little bit for you. I'll demonstrate a little bit here. And so you can just get a taste of it from the beginning. And I have a full performance of this on YouTube. You can listen to that as well. beautiful song. I've always loved this song ever since I discovered it in the Anna Magdalena notebook. <clears throat> so let's start working on it now. We're going to start with just the right hand. So let's look at the beginning here. I would play, I'll give you my fingering here, one, two, one, four, two on A, and then 5 on F, and then a 1, 2, 4 here. And a 1, 2, 5, or actually 1, 3, 5, it's probably better. Then 1, 2 on those, and then you have to, you have to change positions. 1, 3, 5, and then another 1, 3, 5. Make sure your thumb is about here so it can easily go to that black key there. Two on D and then three, five on E flat and G. 
and then you're going to lift and plant your thumb on that G. Make sure you hold that G down with your thumb. And you're going to play 3-5-3. Three, three. And then sort of change positions 1-2 on D and F. And try to reach this. Try to hold D and F down and when you go up to play B flat and D. Don't, don't let go of D and F. But hold them down. Three, five. If you can play four, do that. Three, four. One, two on the B flat and E. Two, five on F and C. Thumb on A. Now, you're going to just sort of flip your third finger around. You're going to go 3, 4, 1, 3, and I would just, actually what I would do after playing 3 on that D, Actually, what you could do is this. There's, there's actually a couple different possibilities with fingering for measure 7. You can go 1, 2. I like to go 1, 2, 2, 5. And then 1, and then 3, 4. And then 1, 3. And I switch to 4. 1, 2. And you can leave that C out. If you really want to play that C, you have to you have to break that C. I don't like breaking that C. I mean, you, if you have really if you have a big reach and long hands or big fingers, if you have long fingers, <laughs> you can you can get that, but it's it's really inconvenient. So a good thing to do is just leave that C out and can much easier do that and then four and five. Another fingering possibility is this for measure seven. You play one and two and then you jump up and you play one and three and then you play two then you play four or five and then two four. my recording, I actually did play that C. It's hard to do though. I mean, it's really, for me, because I have relatively small fingers actually. It's, it's hard to get that. It's not really pianistic. So if you want, I would just recommend leaving that C out unless you have really large fingers. So there are a couple different options with fingerings. You don't always have to play my fingering necessarily, but I'm giving you the fingers that I like to use. You can experiment with fingering. So we're going to take uh, the metronome. We're not going to take it up to tempo. We're going to take really slow. Actually, we're going to take, we're going to put it on 96. And that will be the eighth note speed. So it's one, two, and three, and one, two, one, two, one, two. Or if you count ands, one, and, two, and, three, and. So we're going to play. No paddle right now.
Okay, so I, I played all of that with no pedal. It's really important that you practice the right hand first with no pedal and you're able to play it with a really singing tone. You want to really work on bringing that melody out on the top and making it a very nice, a very clear sound. Now let's look at the left hand. 